So, my friends, as I promised to you, I have a special bonus here. And this is my dear friend, Rina Lank. She is um, she's a coach as well, and she's serving coaches as well. And um, the topic that she wants to share with you is intuitive intelligence. You know, this is especially for coaches looking to accelerate their impact with clients, become a high impact coach and really get ahead. So let me ask you a question here. Do you feel stressed before coaching session? Then this is this lesson where you can learn something, okay? Do you worry about saying the wrong thing or use the wrong technique? If you're worrying, this is the lesson. After this, after, after this lesson, you will not be worried anymore. Do you fear that you might not be able to guide your client toward your goals? Then this is the lesson that you have to take. You know, this lesson is all about tapping into your intuitive intelligence and um, that will allow you to turn your coaching into an effortless process where you are intuitively, intuitively perceive best possible solutions for your client and help them come up with insights that get them greater results. And that's why I'm, I think there's nobody that can teach this better than my dear friend, Rina Lang. <laughs> Hopefully, thank you. What an introduction. <laughs> thank you for, for having me here. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, the topic that we kind of like discussed with Pro that we wanted to talk about. And one of the reasons why I am, I, I've chosen this as my niche, really helping professionals, leaders, and everyone out there who wants to become a thought, thought leader, is really how, how to tap in their own intuitive intelligence and push boundaries of their intelligence. We think that whatever we have uh, as intelligence is static and that's all there is. And we try to read books and improve our memory and uh, speed reading and whatnot, but actually we end up at the same spot. And not everyone can do that. And I think there are better ways and easier ways for us to really push boundaries um, of our intelligence and really take it to the next level. And it's actually really going within and understanding better of who we are and how we are. But in the context of a coach, what I have observed ever since I began uh, my coaching journey is that um, a lot of people, they really rely too much on the memories, knowledge that they have and armed with all those guns, all that knowledge, they go into coaching sessions and it becomes a very stressful endeavor for them because they never know what the client is gonna do with them. And I'm sure every one of us who has been in the coaching game for some time, even when we ask our clients to send us kind of like uh, some sort of information about what is it that you would like to talk to me about, things change and we have to be always able to improvise even when we are put on the spot, when the clients say, let's say, I want to talk about marketing, but then when they come, no, I had a fight with my wife, let's let's talk about that. I cannot, you know, I cannot think about marketing and taking my business to the next level. So what do you do? If you come with all the guns and you prepare it for your marketing session and you rely only on your learned knowledge, then chances are you're going to miss the mark and you're never going to be a, an excellent, successful coach that can always pivot and always has uh, some sort of uh, ability to meet the client where they are. And yes, that's exactly. why, ex yeah, so that's why I don't prepare for my sessions because I know things can change. And I trust, I trust that this person has hired me because I'm the best possible coach for them. And I see it always as a divine meeting. I know it's very spiritual, but I do see it as a divine meeting yes. and that I have everything I need to be able to help that client. And the more I trust myself, the less I stress, the less I stress, the clearer my mind is. And the more I able to actually uh, listen to the client, really understand what the real issue is and also flow with it, flow with it and, and help them to get to solutions, get them to certain understandings. But it's not about relying on that learned knowledge. And that's where I see a lot of coaches getting stuck they trust so little their own intuitive intelligence their own ability to read the emotions of their client to to observe the body language 
and I, I think I mentioned this before to Farouk when we were talking about, you know, about this, um, this event today. What I see, especially with men, unfortunately, that they are paying so little attention to the client. Um, they are busy typing, typing, typing the notes, and all their focus actually is on words. And that's where they miss the mark, because maybe I said something, but I had tears in my eyes. Did you see that when you were typing? You probably didn't. So that's why, you know, all I do is I type, I write by hand, but I never leave my eyes off of the client. I'm yeah. always there looking for all kinds of hints and I'm scanning. I'm not so much in, interested in, in getting stuck on words, but I'm scanning the energies and I'm trying to understand what's behind those words. Yes. And that's intuitive intelligence. That's because the body to... is also speaking, you know, this is the body is speaking, the eyes are soul, speaking. you know, the soul is speaking like the soul is kind of reflecting to the body and you can see a lot of symbols and signs, etc. Yeah. I mean, especially when you are um, disorder or when you have parts uh, uh, conflict, you know, absolutely. This is really powerful. But before I'm getting, we are getting into it right now, I would like to ask you some questions. Like tell, tell us first more about yourself, like, how you come to this, like why you built this knowledge. Let me, let us know more about you, first of all, like before we start into uh, all of this nitty gritty and all of these tools that you want, that you want to share with us. So how did I actually transition into coaching? Yeah. So uh, years ago, uh, people always came to me kind of to bounce around ideas and really kind of getting new perspectives to, um, to their life's challenges. And I always was able to see the positive and the bright side in things. And they always kind of walked away with, with uh, new insights. And at that time, of course, I wasn't a coach and I just went with the flow and probably made some mistakes and was probably telling people what to do. But over time, I, I transitioned eventually in a, co in a consulting career, of course, <laughs> because it, is, it was kind of a natural step, go and consult other people, you know, we get paid for it. That's, you, you know how to do that anyways. And um, yeah, and over time I transitioned out of that uh, corporate career and I decided I will never ever work for anybody again and I'm gonna monetize my gifts and skills. I'm so capable, I'm so gifted, there is so much I could do and I always wanted to have my start of my business. I always knew that. And somehow you get entangled in the corporate careers and you get lost in that and money and safety and whatnot. <laughs> And, and eventually I transitioned out of it and I went traveling all over the world and fast forward, I started, I became self-employed three years ago. And I realized at some point, something caught my eye on Facebook and I saw this coaching course and my eyes kind of like opened up. Oh my God, I'm doing it all along. I've been doing it all along, but maybe I could actually complement my knowledge with actually structure it program to really understand what are the best practices, meet like-minded like people and actually move into a career. And that's when I realized, oh my God, I'm actually flourishing and that this is the right profession for me. And um, truth be told, that's why I focus now on intu intuitive intelligence. I've been always very intuitive about people. I always knew uh, kind of like what they feel, what they think. And uh, it was kind of like my superpower. And now, I'm, I'm monetizing this gift. I'm monetizing this skill. And I didn't realize that over the years, I actually become so good at it that it's really uh, helping me serve my clients in a way that, uh, you know, not everybody can. And that's excellent. And I feel like for the first time, I'm aligned and I'm really passionate and with my heart in it. And this is the right thing. And I'm excited ex to explore more. And I mean, this is an incredible career. I know it's not for everyone, but for me, it was the next natural step and everything just fell into place. Yes, this is what life prepared me for. Mm. And that's why I always say you have to take your past life into your coaching. No matter what you do, no matter what you coach on, you have to take your past life into your coaching. Only then you can really marry your past life with coaching and be passionate about it. Yes, totally. You're totally right. But tell us more about <clears throat> what is the one common myth about your profession or in this coaching industry or in your field that you want to debunk? That it's going to be easy. When we 
get sold on all those coaching programs. It sounds almost, you know, by the time I finish this three months, I'm going to have people lining up and it's going to be so easy and I'm going to be making millions just like the people who sold me that program. And most people crash land really, really bad in the first two months when they finish the program. And that's when they really awaken to the reality that it's not easy at all. It means showing up, it, especially in the beginning. It means working more than you've ever worked on, in your corporate career, more than you ever worked. I think for the first six months, I was working Monday to Sunday, Monday to Sunday. But if you're willing to show up for yourself, for that business, then you will succeed. However, if you struggle with procrastination, if you struggle with overwhelm and such, and if you're having a hard time, then it's really, really, really hard for you to build up a business and succeed in coaching because it's work. It's hard work. Nobody's yes. going to come and look for that golden nugget that you are, which you are, which you are. All of us are golden nuggets. And there's been no coach that I've spoken so far to that I didn't see the great golden nugget that the person is. It's just that nobody's going to bother looking for you, finding you somewhere in the dust, brushing off the dust, and paying you five thousand dollars for it that's not how it works exactly it especially out, especially out. i think also sorry to interrupt you but especially um what i um what i uh, find it really wrong in our industry is that a lot of experts out there out there they try to make it so easy they try to let it look so easy you can actually become millionaire overnight okay let's say and i think this is wrong I think we should have a better education in this as a coach to say, you know, success needs time. And especially you need to fail and failing is great to learn from it. You know, this is really like a huge, huge misunderstanding in our industry. Yeah, go, go ahead. Sorry. And another misunderstanding is, and I keep teaching uh, coaches around this, is that it's called a coaching business. It is not a coaching self-employment. And coaches go into this industry thinking it's a coaching self-employment. It's not. It's a coaching business. But many, let's say, if you have a corporate career and stuff, probably you have an edge. You definitely have an edge and you quicker move into that coaching business mindset. It's a completely different mindset, completely different mindset. However, many, many, and the worst thing, many go into the coaching business as if it was coaching employment, <laughs> which is again, not even that, <laughs> definitely not that, you know, nobody's going <laughs> to be behind you, be breathing down your neck, telling you what should you know, you're all, your own boss now, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's kind of an entrepreneurial uh, yes. um, game, you know, it's an entrepreneurial world. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, you're right. And it requires a completely different mindset, which many people don't have. They have the heart in the right place, but not the mindset. And that's unfortunate. And it takes time. And unfortunately, because before people can develop that mindset, the funds dry out and they go back into the corporate. And we see that all the time. Or they give up yes. on the coaching hope. That's yeah. so true, Rina. That's so true. But, you know, tell me you, why do you think exposure to be creative or to to have exposure to new ideas is necessary for your growth depends on where you are at some point you don't need new ideas as a coach you just need to implement what you already learned we see people all the time jumping from one program to another to another to another and they still haven't had even one single client it depends on where you are where you are in your journey yes new ideas are necessary and talking to people all the time, seeing what they're doing is very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, I see there are two levels of ideas that we need to look at. One level of idea is talking to other coaches about the business so that you can implement something else in your business. Second level of ideas is the ideas that you're picking up around the niche that you're coaching so that you can present to your clients new ideas, new perspectives. And you have to educate yourself, continue educating yourself, whatever area it is. Yes, as coaches, we go back and, and build on our own experience a lot. And that's what we share. And that's what we help clients with. I've been there. You can do it. But at the same time, we need to upgrade our knowledge. Life is not static. doesn't mean the last 20 years, whatever you learned, that's it. No, you actually grow and you eventually even grow out of, of your coaching niche and grow out of your coaching clients. 
you need to stop looking at something else because it's not the end. It doesn't mean that's your coaching mission. That's what you're going to do for the next 60 years. It's not going to be like that. You're going to keep evolving. So you want to evolve, evolve your know-how and you in, in the business area and you want to evolve your know-how that you get paid for, right? Yes, totally. So yeah, exposing yourself to new ideas is, I would, you know, I seek new ideas all the time. So stick, you mean like stick with one and really um, first achieve this one idea or bring it to life, you mean, right? And then go to the next idea or, because this is also what I'm seeing. A lot of coaches, they are constantly creating, creating, but they never follow through. They actually never implement all of this stuff, you know, and they have kind of, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 pages of ideas, new ideas, but actually they never follow through. They never implement all of these ideas. Yeah. My, my, my observation and even observing how I've done it in my career is that I always say audience first, content second, audience, audience, audience. Yeah. And there is so much knowledge. There are so many ideas and there are so many things I can do. But I see it like uh, I have 20 years to implement it. I don't have to implement it all now. Uh, first, I my focus is always on audience, on real people, people I'm serving, people I run workshops with, people I coach, free coaching, paid coaching, discover calls, whatever. There's always something I'm learning, yeah. which shows me what is the next thing I can actually offer, sell, promote, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that's how the next step kind of emerged for me. That's why I think we spoke spoken about when we first met is mm. that I do a course, I make sure that course makes me money before I start investing in any other course. I make sure that whatever I've absorbed, I zap out all the information of it, internalize, make money on it, then implement it, become perfect at it. Then I see what is the next step. Is it for me to learn how to use quizzes or is it for me how to learn funnels? What's yeah. the next step? Only then I move to the next step. Only what, when I've, I've outgrown, the course that I've already done, I internalized it and maybe eventually then pass to somebody else, hire somebody else to do it for me. But that's again, going back to intuitive intelligence and then learned knowledge. When we don't trust our intuitive intelligence, we trust the learned knowledge, which, what, which is what we do. We go keep, keep acquiring more and more learned knowledge because we lack confidence. We lack confidence. We think the more I know, the better coach I will be. Truth be told, Actually, you don't need any courses at all, just the knowledge you already have. It's enough for you to start getting clients and being a good coach. All you need to do is listen, and it's a divine meeting. That is the perfect person, and what you know, you already know, and you can help them. You don't need anything else. But people get so caught up on that that they just trust their intuitive intelligence so much. They go after more knowledge, and then what happens? Your mind is so cluttered so cluttered that when you turn up for a session you don't know oh my god oh my god which one i choose this technique that technique this technique that technique but it's <laughs> one it's a technique that you learned from somebody else and you will never be it's not your experience you didn't develop this, that technique you need to first make it your own apply it many 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 times so that it's natural intuitive to you <laughs> then Sorry. Mm. and only then you will be able to confidently step up yeah. but if you learn 50, techni 50 techniques and none of them is yours it's memorized. And who of us, you know, when we're studying, when, when we studied, when we were at school, we know what happened to memorize knowledge. I don't remember what I studied. <laughs> Honestly, don't ask me. It's just memorized, memorized. I need it. I don't need it. Out of door, it goes. But intuitive intelligence, it's always with you. Always with you. But you just need to know how to access it. That's the thing. And many people, they don't trust it. They trust and learn knowledge. And they actually play down that part of them. Yes, I totally agree. You're so right, especially in this kind of age where we are living right now. You know, memory or learning fast things and implementing is a huge, huge um, challenge for the most people right now. A lot of people have really long short-term uh, uh, rememberings and memory. And um, this is, uh, yeah, you're totally right. But, you know, share with us, uh, Rina, what does the next level look like for you as a coach? Like, what is the next level for a coach? What is the ultimate, like, what is the best future coach look like for you? 
let's say, coaches in 20, 30 years from now, I have this vision, vision of there has to be a coach in every family. <laughs> there has to be a coach in every family. And I got this idea from Argentina where they have a, a therapist in every family. Mm. The family constellations like that, father, mother, child, son, and then daughter, son, and then the therapist. And I have the same vision for coaches that there has to be a coach in every family. Mm. Having said that, um, if I have to think about my next step, and it's a good question because I'm at that, that stage where I'm completely changing my niche. And I'll tell you why, because I had an epiphany very, very recently. I had a call with a coach who, something happens with all those six-figure coaches who promise you six figures and seven figures that they're so full of themselves often that uh, they tend to look down on me. And it was uh, actually uh, not a very nice experience for me. But having said that, it made me reflect a lot on my niche, on the clients I have. And I realized that the niche that I was serving, I will never be able to grow mm -hmm. in that particular niche. I will never be able to charge high fees. I'll never be able to, and it's, it's too hard acquiring clients, which actually put everything for me upside down. But the realization that I got, you have to be able to give up on a niche and open doors for better niches. And fortunately for, my, for me, I realized that there is a much, much better niche that I can serve. And I became very, very, very clear on what type of people I want to serve. And it changed everything. My niche changed, my, the people I'm serving changed, and now everything's flowing in a way that didn't flow before. And it's okay because sometimes we, we think we, we figured out the niche, but actually there are three, four courses that we can send into the game because it's not that straightforward that it's just that niche. Like you yourself, you're a dancer. Who knows, maybe in five years, you completely change your niche and focus on dancers. And because you realize that there is just something, some potential, some group of people that you can serve in a unique way, but you need to grow into that epiphany, grow into that learning. And I would say whatever what was, I mean, What was for you the discovery? Why, what, what is the, what was the decision you made? Why you made the decision to change a, a niche? What was the realization? Just one comment, you're a bit blurry. So I found something with the camera. What was the realization? Basically, uh, when I had that conversation with that person, I, of course, I was upset. And then I just reflected. I'm, I'm the type of person that I always reflect. I don't blame, shame, make wrong other people. I just know there is something this meeting was meant to do in my life. There was something that through that conversation needed to happen. And maybe when we were having that conversation, I was not ready to hear it. But I sat down and I reflected, there's some golden insight for me there. And then I started reflect, reflecting, who am I serving? Who are the people? What am I actually helping them with? Is this scalable? Can I ever make the process of acquiring clients easier? Do I really want to serve this niche forever? How, how does it sit with me? And I had to ask really, really hard questions about that. And then I realized... Example, example questions. Can you share this with us? Like hard questions what was really, there, there are parts of us that we kind of marginalize, like our spirituality or our intuition and such, and things that we, we don't really want to um, embrace. Like just to give an example, uh, a coach that uh, I know, he's a firefighter. And when, he, when we first met, he was going to coach around entrepreneurship. And I couldn't connect that. And so we had conversations and over time, you know, and now he's more and more able to embrace firefighters as a niche. And it's a hard niche because not everybody is open to coaching and he struggles with um, uh, acceptance. And he's kind of like still a closet coach just because of how things are. But actually it's, a, it's probably if you really nails it down to a message to something. There's so many people he could serve in that industry. The same is for me. When I ask those questions, what reflecting on all the co coaches that I had, I realized that truth be told, the most things that they enjoy 
when coaching with me is actually not so much helping them with their businesses, but actually helping them with their with their ability to cope with overwhelm, you know, intuitive intelligence. In a game, actually, in a game stuff. Mm. Actually, not just that. I have lots and lots of coaches, like my my own story, four years, five years ago when I was in, as a, consul- a consultant, my mind was so foggy. I would, my memory would be so bad. I would record on a phone conversations because I could not remember. I would walk out of meetings and I was a consultant. Can you imagine? I would walk out of meetings and I would have to listen to the recordings because my con- my mind was so foggy. And I would have clients like that all the time. And I was teaching them tricks, techniques, whatever I've tried on myself to really unleash my mind so that I can think on a completely different level. And my mind is so, so, so fast. And I'm able to cope with 10 different projects at the same time without being overwhelmed. And we often see it so right in our faces, Mm. but we just don't see it. But actually, when I started asking myself questions, that's the niche, can I go? Where do you you want to go? I want to get to that and that in a year, in two years. I realized I cannot do this. What else can I do? So what is it that really people love doing with me? love doing with me and then I realized oh my god this is what I always wanted to do and I want to actually work with leaders in the industry and I I no longer want to work with coaches I want to work with leaders in the industry and I really want to help them unleash their intellectual potentials to such an extent that they they it will generate them competitive advantages over others and also will ensure that they will never have to worry about mental deterioration ever because that's a big big fear as we're getting bombarded so much with information, that's where the issue comes that our memories deteriorate because it's just too much. It's like monkey mind, monkey mind. The brain is so, so tired, so tired that actually just by applying certain techniques that relax the brain, relax the brain, clean up yourself. Of course, there are all kinds of techniques that I teach and you can unleash and you can get to higher levels of intelligence. Yeah, and so give, give us give us one example. What is the what could be the activity that you could unleash your brain? Give can you can you share with us one one? Yes, two, three? one thing that I and you can Google it. Um, mm. uh, the Jose Silva method. Uh, mm. He actually developed this met- method, and Vishen Lakiani teaches around it. The uh, Mind Valley uh, founder, mm-hmm. and what he um, there ex- um, shares with people is actually alpha and theta, theta sounds. And I've been experimenting with alpha and theta sounds myself for the last maybe 10 months or so. And because I can see, feel my energy so well, it's incredible just by listening to those sounds, how I can feel my entire face just relaxes, all the nerves, everything, my entire body relaxes, my brain relaxes. And I just realized ever since, since I started doing that, I don't need to do a speed reading course. I just read faster. I think faster. My mind, my, my head doesn't feel heavy anymore. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for a long, long time that I was as if I was carrying like, I don't know, a tons and tons of weight on my head. It was so, so hard to think. I was constantly struggling with fatigue and I was constantly struggling with, I was not able to focus. And just by, by just listening to that sound, maybe Google it on YouTube, you probably can find it. It's just- What is the name? Alpha, 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 theta sounds, Jose Silva method, just Silva method. There are books around that, they, that you can read. You can get a course, do a course with Vishen Lakiani uh, where he teaches that. And it's an excellent way for you to start relaxing your brain. And that's just one of the different steps. But I think if you apply this one, it will already do wonders to you. I had great uh, feedback on that from clients. I love doing it at night when I just, before I go sleep, I relax my brain, I sleep better. But other clients told me that they couldn't sleep on the contrary because it kind of activates, relaxes, but activates your mind. They do it in the morning. So if you do that, honestly, when I get, uh, when I just started doing that and my mind was still kind of like fatigued and I have to still work, I have work to do, I would just plug in for 10 minutes and it's incredible. 10 minutes and I energize. It's such a booster. Yes. Yeah. So wow, wow, it's great. That sounds great. But tell us more about um, when you are starting. What have you? What did, what have you learned about yourself when you decide to go this journey? What you learn about yourself? A lot. 
I think nothing has challenged me to grow, to transform, to look at myself more than coaching. Nothing, no other job that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I also do, do see a lot of coaches that they don't invest enough time in, in themselves because we know that coaching is a charismatic game. People get attracted to your energies, to your, to your, it's not just about what you know. If they don't enjoy spending an hour with you, they will not buy any coaching from you. But unfortunately, many coaches, they're so intense, so tense, so unhappy themselves still that you have to be someone that clients feel uplifted. They have to walk out of the session feeling better about themselves, energetically feeling uplifted. But it, I had, I, I also scheduled all kinds of coaches all the time because we have a big community of over 3,000 people. Uh, I co-founded a coaching community and I schedule coaches over and over again. And there are so many times where I feel more drained after the coaching session than I was before. And investing into your own becoming happy and meditation, whatever it is, rising your energy levels to such an extent that you can lift the person up because it's an energy exchange that's happening with your client all the time. Reason that people are not scheduling with you, chances are it's not because you don't know your game, you cannot help them. It's just because they don't like you. They don't like being with you. Yes. Mm. And if you are depressed, the client is depressed, guess where you end? But a lot of people, they're incredible human beings and they've gone through a lot, a lot of hardship. But probably before you get into the coaching game, you need to be in a good place. And that's why I talk a lot about you have to be a tree, you cannot be a tent. You have to be a tree where the client comes, they can unburden themselves with you and you're going to stand. You're going to stand firmly in your happiness, in your joy, and you still are going to smile and you still are going to see all the positive things, but they can rely on you, lean on, on you. A lot of coaches, in fact, most of coaches, I would say they're tense. They cannot show up for their clients because they have not deal, dealt with their own shit enough, pardon <laughs> my, my language, <laughs> to actually so become be a, 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 a tree for, for the clients. And sometimes they're even not self-regulated and they go into coaching sessions. But can I ask you something, um, Rina? What is for you the number one thing? Or do you have a kind of a routine when you go into a coaching session? What you are doing before this coaching session? Let's say 30 minutes before the coaching session. Honestly, I pray. And whoever you believe in. But I think for me, I do like um, the Lord's Prayer in particular. But it's how, because I understand the esoteric side of the lord's prayer i'm not Catholic. and how looks this one can, can you share this with us lord's prayer yeah actually you need to understand the esoteric side of the lord's prayer every single line in the lord's prayer is actually a key uh access to a different chakra mm -hmm. and many don't know that they think it's just a prayer and that's it and i never practiced it until i met a, uh, um, someone who used to be a catholic nun and she tell, told me how the lord's prayer is a remover of obstacles and what they do in latin america when somebody gets kidnapped they actually get together many many people and together they actually do the lord's prayer and they had great results of recovering kidnapped victims and i didn't believe it until i started practicing for, the, for about one year and a half whenever i ran into up obstacles in my life but i also know the esoteric said there's a whole book written on that uh, by master choco the founder of frank healing that people can google actually he it's an excellent book where it explains to you exactly which chakra what does it do what does the different chakra stand for in what's the name what's the name the, of the book it's yeah. Oh, it's something along the lines of Lord's Prayer, the Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic something, and um, mas, uh, it's by Master Chua Kok Sui. And so what's happening with this prayer is actually when I repeat this several times, it actually cleans all, all my chakras, which means whatever energetically I've been carrying, maybe picked up from an earlier client or picked up from my family, whatever it is, I actually clean up all my chakras, which means when I turn up for that conversation with a client, I come up as a clean 
being clean entity and I don't project too much of my own uh, my, my own stuff on that client and I'm actually right. able to perceive energetically what's happening with the client yes. and I do that and it actually clears up my mind a lot whatever I'm carrying whatever it's happening by the time I turn up for the coaching session my mind is empty but mm -hmm. I've also been meditating for the last six and a half years so I'm, I'm quite proficient in meditation as well and I've done so much energy work uh, myself that I would say uh, my monkey mind is long past. Okay. Those times have passed. So I'm able to keep a clear mind because I rely heavily on my intuitive um, uh, intelligence in my coaching sessions. Okay. Well, <clears throat> okay. You know, last question that I have for you. Um, tell us something you had exposure to recently, recently right now that changed your perspective. It's a very good question. I had um, a coaching session earlier this week. So it's a very recent example with someone who is a confidence coach. And I used to always tell coaches in our community, co confident, confidence coach, what is that? What does it even mean? You know, nobody needs a coach, confidence coach. You need to actually get somebody, some sort of tangible result. Until I had a session with somebody who is a confidence coach. And then I realized, yes, I'm very confident at this level. And that's, again, it's kind of like everything aligned where I'm transitioning into the up higher level and a different, completely different game in terms of my coaching niche, in terms of the clients I want to, I want to serve. And I realized, yes, confidence is great, but often what keeps us from growing is because we don't have the confidence of the next level. <laughs> I'm very confident where I am now, the people I have around me, but then I realized that I, as I'm growing and I, as I'm taking everything, my business, everything to the next level, the people that I have around me now, they might be holding me back. I'm very confident here. But then if I think who is my next client, who are the people I want to serve, who are the people I want to align myself with, then I realize that A, I need to probably leave a certain peer group behind. I need to align myself with the next peer group. Do I have the confidence to act at that, at that level? I never realized that actually... I don't. Mm. And that's why I'm, I'm working with a confidence coach. And it's incredible how many insights I had. And chances are, coaches who are listening to us now, that if you are feeling stuck, if you're feeling stuck, chances are you need to start really looking at the next level peer group. You need to really start looking at your next level confidence. Do you, are you even confident with the next level money that you're going to earn? These are all bigger shoes that you need to grow into. Grow into. And it's a journey and you need to start making certain decisions around it. It doesn't mean you're going to unfriend all those people you, who've been friends with you until today, but we all know we are a combination of the six people that, that surround, it, surround us, right? Isn't that? And so often, we are, if we keep working, if we keep showing up and pushing our business to the next level, then everything's got to change. And it doesn't mean that just by putting ourselves in the mastermind is enough. No, it's not exactly. enough. Just putting ourselves in the mastermind is actually really looking and deciding where do I want to be? Do I want to be best friends with Bill Gates in one year from now? Yeah. What do I need? Who I do I need to be? What sort of confidence do I need to have? How do I build up that confidence? Yes. Right. How looks it, like for you? What what means confident? Like and why it is important to be a confident coach? I realized in the past, uh, let's say, um, if my favorite actor turned up, it's, which, who is Harrison Ford, of course, in the image of the <laughs> if he actually turned up in front of me right now and said, hi, I'll probably drop that. I'll probably mm -hmm. drop that. Because I put people on a certain pedestal who are way, way, way above me, and I'm somewhere here and there's somewhere, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. Which confidence is all about actually getting bigger and bigger understanding of who you really are ultimately spiritually looking looking at, at all of us we are the same but he achieved something that i have not achieved i'm somewhere here and he's achieved something else so of course there's lots of respect but there's also that uh inability to relate to that person he's like your childhood childhood hero so there is no confidence in in that like he's godlike and who i am who am i and the same is with, with, our, with the business, right? We, we all know famous people. We all know 
the people we want to align ourselves with, but actually ultimately we think they're better than us. And guess what? That's why they don't want you in their club because you actually bow to them. And yes. you yourself don't have the confidence to stand in front of them and hold your hand high and be like them because you're not. So you need to um, probably think who, who, is, who are those people? Who are you want to rub shoulders with in a year from now? So, and it doesn't mean that I have to make the same money as them. It doesn't mean just that, but probably I need to achieve certain things in my journey that will allow me to stand next to them and say, you know what, you're not better than I. I've achieved myself a lot of things and I can be proud of that, right? So, and that's where the confidence comes from. And I never, never kind of realized that, never realized that until uh, recently. Mm -hmm. And that was a good, good, good insight, which again, it, all the pieces came together. And that's when I realized, Okay, this niche I had, it was fun. I learned a lot. This was the right thing for me to do. I felt my intuition all along. But then, you know, I was led to new insights and I realized a door closes, the new door opens. Am I, do you have the confidence to step through that door? Yes. Then what do I need to do? And as a coach, we need to keep evolving, keep evolving, keep evolving. Yes. Do you think this is the number one um uh thing where they can take action coaches to raise the confidence what could be the number one thing what coaches can do every day to be a confident coach it's again if you're a tree or if you're a tent you know we all learn this other lesson and selfie uh i what i mm -hmm. said before i you know became a coach and want to save the world and save other people now save other people now i think that's that's where kind of. it comes also as a coach you know the mistakes we make in the beginning we want to save other people we're not there to save anybody mm. but the thing is this my focus was forget the world forget other people focus on yourself and that's why i went through six year transition six and a half years have done a lot invested a lot in myself I wasn't trying to save my parents, my family, nobody. I was focusing. Yes, I was selfish, but I focused on myself. And so I'm in sure terms of I'm, learning, you mean, right? In not just learning. learning. I invested a lot mm. into energy healing and and uh, coaching and whatnot. And it was all about me. Actually, you have to become an island onto yourself. And it's again tapping into your intuition, increasing, increasing your connection to your own, that part of you, which is divine, that knows everything about you, knows why you are. And that's when you start developing such a, such a strong compass within you and you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And once you know, it's like blind leading the blind. Once you know where you're going, that's where you, no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what's happening with other people, no matter what's happening all around you, you are confident because you know who you are. But it doesn't mean you reach your, your full potential. And that's, that's what's happening, I, th I think, with a lot of coaches as well, that they, they're still too hurt, too yes. pained, too, too much suf suffering, too much still. Yes, you only need to be three steps ahead of your client. But if you're still not having clients, if this business is still not working out, and if you're still lacking uh, motivation and, and you procrastinate and such, you work on your business, then invest all you can, all your efforts in yourself. That's what I did. I didn't want to save anybody. The first two years of my self-employment, I wasn't even making that much, much money. It was enough for me to travel and invest in my self-development. I invested thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in my self-development. And it wasn't about making money. I didn't want to save anybody, just me, myself, and I. Yes. But now after, after I, it was sometime last year when I stepped up and I looked at myself in the mirror, oh my God, I'm the happiest person I know. I am the happiest person I know. Nobody's happier in my circle than I. And that's why I had such an insight. Oh my God, now I'm strong enough. I'm able to teach and guide people towards the same happiness. And guess what? That's what attracts people. It's my energy, my happiness, my, my, my positivity mm -hmm. and all that. And they believe that she was depressed six years ago. This is where she's now. It's genuine. She's not faking it because you cannot fake it. And this is what I want to, if she can do it, I can do it. She knows something that I don't know she can lead me. Yeah. yeah. What? Great. I totally agree what you're saying. Tell me, Rina, what fulfills you when you really deliver value, when you coach somebody and you see 
the feedback, it's really positive. They change their life. What is it that fulfill you? <clears throat> very, very good question. Often people, when they come for us to, co to us for coaching, they are almost without hope to be able to help themselves more than anything. We reach our potential. We think we've reached our potential. This is all I know. And I need somebody now to help me because I don't know. But actually, just after two, three sessions with you, yes, in the beginning, it might be slow, but two, three, four sessions, then you start realizing they're coming back and actually took your ideas or took their own insights, run away with it, experimented. And you would, think, you would think, okay, they'll probably go grow two inches, but they come back and they've grown 10 inches. You're like, oh my God. And like, yeah, you gave me hope. And I tried this and I tried that and experiment that. And guess what? And I'm often surprised, uh, even though I supr I'm surprised that I would have expected them to grow this much, but they grow, you know, 10, 10 times more. Yeah. When you plant that hope, you brush the dust of the client, you give them a few tips, help them to start getting to their own insight, give them hope, give them confidence, they can do it on their own. Exactly. And for the rest of the, of the whatever we sign up for, the coaching package, then it's just me basically listening about them, <laughs> raving about their successes. Yes, of course, there will be troubles, but then they will come to you, oh my God, I did this. Oh my God, I would have never done that. Oh my God, this, is, this has changed for me. And they often surprise me. So I think <laughs> just being surprised by my clients, it never, it never kind of fails to amaze me. And then I'm like, oh my God, and I'm, I'm crying with them. And, and we both are so happy about the successes that they've achieved. Mm -hmm. and, and that's beautiful. That's beautiful to really see that there's no limit to anyone's potential. Yeah. And we are not saving anybody. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Rina, share with us, you know, we have in our group some people that are trainers, mentors. Um, why for you it is important, like, why it is important to be a coach today? Like, what is the benefit to be a coach? Very tell me good. more about the benefits to be a, a let great me tell coach. You about, let me tell you about the analogy that I often use. We coaches, we are with our clients in an air balloon basket. That's what we are. We are together with our client in an air balloon basket. Often when the clients come to us, all they are used to doing is looking at the sandbags. Oh my God, my traumas, my child traumas, sandbags, sandbags, sandbags. They will pay $100, a therapist, to help them look at their sandbags. But I think by now, a lot of people, they're tired of looking at their sandbags. They're tired. They will pay you $500 if you are the one standing beside them, forget the sandbag, look at the air balloon. Look at the air balloon. This is the future. This is the beautiful, colorful thing we want for you. This is the whole, look where you can get, can get in three months by working with me. This is where I'm taking you. You are the one who keeps turning their gaze from the sandbags to the air balloon so that they keep rising and rising and rising. And that's what they pay you incredible money for. That's your role. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, a lot of coaches, they confuse themselves with therapists. They spend one hour looking at the sandbags because the <laughs> on clients... The past, sandbags. On the past, yes. Yeah. So but if I, I, have... think, I think this is a misconception also. They are like a lot of people, they don't know what means like what means to have a coach in general. They don't know how this stuff works, what the job is of a coach. You know, Tell us more about that. Let's, and a let's lot of coaches forget too that they are they're there to keep showing them the air balloon. Mm -hmm. When the client comes to me, I never spend more than 10, 15 minutes on the sandbox. Yes, if they have to talk about it, if they have an issue, but I make sure that we don't spend one hour talking about the sandbox. That's not what you're paying me for. Exactly. You don't have to keep repeating. Yes, there is an issue. I've heard you. Let's do something about it. Let's work through it. Let's use techniques, whatever it is that we have at the disposal, intuitively come up with whatever get them to the insights so that at the end of that that conversation they leave again looking at that air balloon so that they removed something that was a sandbag we threw off one of the sandbags and the air balloon can rise even higher as a coach i mustn't forget that my role is to get them higher to look at that air balloon and so yeah if if i can leave coaches with this analogy use it 
keep telling your clients, we are in the same air balloon. We are looking at the sandbag, not at the sandbags, but at the, at the balloon itself. And it's colorful. Let's paint it. Let's look at it together. We are rising. The things are getting better. I yeah. like that. And so that's why, again, I said, I want a coach in every family. If we yes. could have a coach in every family yes. where we stop looking at sandbags, we no look trouble, at the bright, brighter future, that would yes. be so much better. So yes. much better. Absolutely. Great. Rina, such a great great conversation here um yes let's come into thank you again for okay. all your answers and uh, maybe some people has questions here let's go are you are you do you have a second time here to answer sure. some questions sure. okay question number one natalia jokel ask what coaches no what what coaching courses and certification do you recommend there's so much art in the market Okay, by the way, Natalia, Digital Life Upgrade is one of them, you know. <laughs> Natalia, I will leave you the link, but also uh, Rina can share also her uh, recommendation. Well, I have, I honestly, I don't know much about the um, coaching world and I have never really researched um, many courses or such. I just happened to see the virtual coach program, which both of us actually attended uh, from the, the, the same program. And I absolutely loved it. And I know that there'll be another launch in November. So yes. you might want to watch out for that. And it's absolutely great program because it's done by Evan and Annie. And I think they're a very, very good combination. Annie is very intuitive, very um, emotion, kind of like emotionally attuned. And Evan is very mind focused. So you get kind of like two perspectives, regardless of what you coach on. The coaching game is an outer and inner game. So I think you will get to really um, learn from experts in the field, and they're really, really good. I can, you know, they're charging $2,000 for it. I would have, now that I've done it, I would have paid $10,000 for it. Yeah. And, but the real reason why I signed up for that program is because you get to attend coaching gyms. And they offer four coaching gyms a week. So you get to coach, coach, coach a lot in that program as well, which if you use it wisely, you can build up your network right away, right away with all the coaches that are in that program. And I met so many incredible friends. You never know where your next client is going to come from. Use that network to really befriend people. Coaches, many forget that coaches have issues too. Your ideal client, chances are, is already one of the coaches or they know somebody in their network who could become your ideal client. So if you use that program wisely, you get to coach, you get to expose to a very, very good program. It's an excellent program. And on top, maybe they should pay me for this. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah um, and I, I really was not disappointed. And I keep going back and watching the replays and such. Um, but I would say it teaches you really, really well how to coach, how to show up for your clients. But I would say it didn't really prepare me for the business side of coaching. And I don't think that in three months, any coaching program will teach you that. You probably will be better off signing up for, for Farouk's program um, because I think you focus more on, on the business side of things. Yes, yes, you will need to actually add on some sort of a, a program that will help you um, get clients and set up your, your systems and business. Because again, it's not self-employment, it's coaching business. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is one of the biggest problems of the courses outside there because the difference between uh, Digital Life Upgrade and other programs is really like we are moving the people. We are moving there physically as well. So you really get them into action. <clears throat> But we are also helping with tools and techniques like how to coach people as well. Like we're using some inspiration also from virtual coach, but we found also several different kind of uh, kind of relationship leader uh, skills and tools. I mean, but um, but definitely, I mean, I learn also a lot from virtual coach program. I mean, absolutely. There's no question, there's no brainer for it. And the money that I invest in was also no brainer. I mean, I learned so many things and I built a huge network as well. Yeah, Rina, tell us where can our listeners find you? Like where they can connect with you? 
Yes. So just look me up on Facebook, look me up on LinkedIn, Lina Lang. Mm -hmm. Very simple, um, short name. <laughs> yes. But also uh, maybe we can drop the link of, of my Facebook community as well into the chat where we have over 3000 uh, coaches. And actually we started this community on the back of the virtual coach program. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of coaches are there. And right now we are specializing also a lot on uh, running events and workshops and such. Uh, very affordable or free at all. I'm always going all live there. And um, it's really kind of like aimed at beginners coaches, their first six months uh, to 12 months as a coach, especially if you don't have corporate background, especially if you maybe just getting out of uh, some sort of employment and you haven't even mastered self-employment yet, really go back to basics like teaching people how to use Facebook, how to use, yeah. how to use LinkedIn and things like that. So um, yeah, this is kind of like the niche we are trying to fill with my partner and I. We, it's a love, it's a passion project for us because we realize both of us, we have corporate background and we realized that a lot of the things were so easy for us. Our friends from the virtual coach program were struggling. And before we knew it's, it's, it's grown just this size. And yeah, maybe we drop in the link and join us. Yeah. Guys, when you, when you want uh, Rina Lang again um, doing the sessions, you know, just comment yes, and then uh, we know. And uh, I hopefully when I, yeah, when I can have you back again to, for yes. other things, for other topics could be really great. Thank you for having, having you in our, in our group. And uh, yes, thank you so much. Do you would like to say something else? Do you have a kind of a last message that you want to share? I see Natalia say yes. Okay, there's no way out. Rina, we have to, we have, you have to come back. <laughs> Perfect, I will, I will. I guess <laughs> one thing I'm famous in my community for is I'm a massive action taker. I never leave the place of decision without taking action. And just like Tony Robbins says, this is one of the things that I really internalize. When I meet somebody, I immediately start scheduling. When are we going to meet? When is this, like, what, first time we, we met with, with Farouk? We met, haven't left the, the conversation without booking all the calls, booking all the meetings, in, deciding on the yes. topic, deciding on everything. I'm like that. If the energy flows, I want to do this, I do it right away. And that's how I also go about my business. Uh, I always say audience first, content second, which means if somebody told me today, you know, I would like, I would love to catch your videos on YouTube. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't have a YouTube channel. This person told me on the second day, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> yes. Because I'm yes. like that. I believe in every person that comes into my life. They have something to tell me. And that's the next step for my business. That's the next step. I don't go figure out and implement things that nobody asked me for. Yes. So if you pay attention, you never and never leave the place of decision without taking action. Because often you have that, should we have a life? Yeah, maybe we should. Okay, bye. <laughs> Nothing, <laughs> happens. Nothing happens. No, we're doing, we're doing this live. What are the topics? What do you want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? Okay, let's schedule it then. Let's get it done. I schedule everything in. Everything gets scheduled. I chatted with somebody on the on Facebook. Okay, sounds like you're doing something interesting. Maybe you could be interesting for our lives. This is my link. Schedule with me next week. I want to talk to you. Done. <laughs> nice action taker. So it's all about taking action. This is this is great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your wisdom. You. Thank you for your experience. And uh, hopefully, I we can have you back. Okay, Rina. Let's schedule. When when next week, Jim. <laughs> We'll schedule after. <laughs> Thank you, Rina. Talk to you. Anybody, other questions here? I don't see any questions. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you, Rina. Talk to you really soon. I don't stop. Ah, wait. Can I stream? Okay, let me.